everyone, Steve with Newegg TV here, and today we're going to talk about Microsoft Server 2012 R2 and the three categories of build combos Newegg has set up with Microsoft. In an effort to ease the selection process of your first or possibly your next server, we've created three tiers of server builds. First is good, that's entry level, followed by better, which utilizes server class components, and finally best, which is the best bet for admins that want to have or need heavy virtualization. So, the entry level servers provide an inexpensive build option that's uh, pretty much less than $1,000. The better level steps you up to server class components for less than $2,500. And the top tier servers are intended for those that want the maximum performance out of their servers using virtualization. Now, all of these components were hand picked and discounted for the bundle. Check out the link in the description below if you're interested in purchasing them. But for now, let's watch the interview. Hey everybody, welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Steve and today in the studio we have Eric from Microsoft. Eric, what's up? How you doing? I'm good, man. All We're right. Talk a little bit about uh, server builds if you're okay with that. Absolutely. Awesome. And if you guys didn't already know, we actually have one other video that's relating to an entry level uh, server build uh, conversation that we had earlier, mm -hmm. but this one is going to be on the uh, the better version, right? That's right. So we, we technically have three. We're doing videos on the two. Um, in terms of, of building your own server, the, probably the first thing that comes to everyone's mind is why should I, why should I be migrating to build anything new, right? I, maybe the first reason comes to mind is Windows Server 2003, end of support, right? Absolutely. So yeah, Windows Server 2003 is ending support on July of 2015. So a lot of people are still running that old operating system. When support ends, there's gonna be you know, security concerns, it's gonna be compliance concerns. Um, the Department of Homeland Security Computer Emergency Readiness Team recently released an alert telling everybody move off of Windows Server 2003. So it's a great opportunity to build a new server or buy a, an existing uh, server and move off of that old stuff, take advantage of the new hardware, the new software that's available. It's a really good point, especially the new hardware side. Uh, speaking of that, now in the last video we talked more about desktop componentry and, and primarily for, for price savings. Uh, this one actually is going to center around more server class componentry, right? So what would you say the main reasons would be to use server class componentry over desktop? So server class components are designed for reliability, mm. right? When you're running uh, email or databases or enterprise class applications, you cannot afford any downtime. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost of downtime is way more than the server class components. Right. So when you need maximum uptime, up you need server class components. Makes perfect sense. Uh, so maybe we should talk about specifically uh, a few different topics. So the CPU, for instance, which direction would you, would you anticipate going? So with the better configurations, uh, I think a Xeon processor is a much better fit okay. than a desktop class processor. It's got more cores, it's got more cache, right. uh, it's tested and certified to run 24 seven for years at a time. So it's best fit there. Absolutely, so then uh, ECC RAM then I'm guessing too? Absolutely. ECC RAM has uh, you know error checking ability built in. It can recover from the most common types of memory problems. So it's just better uptime with ECC RAM. Perfect. So then uh, on top of that, uh, storage is obviously an important consideration. RAID specifically, right? Exactly. Yeah, RAID gives you redundancy at the disk uh, level. You know, disks fail all the time. It's got moving parts, moving at thousands of RPMs. You really need something that can recover from these common types of failures. So you need some type of hardware redundancy. RAID's the most common and gives you really good performance. Um, it kind of insulates the storage system from the operating system. And um, you know, it's kind of the industry standard on how to, how to recover quickly from hard drive failure. Dude, that's a good point too. Uh, finally, uh, maybe maybe just network interface cards in general. Um, you're gonna, are you gonna prefer one over another or? Well, I, I prefer more over less. So okay. our, the server class machines will have multiple NICs, and you know, typically, typically an Intel NIC is very reliable, robust, and and uh, you know, preferred. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So, the better our better server build hardware, uh, what kind of considerations? Now, I did mention price was an important one for the good or entry level server. Is price still going to be a consideration? Price is always a concern. It's just not the focus with the better okay. um, system. So with that good system where we're trying to get a server uh, using desktop parts for under $1,000, including the OS. Okay. With the better system, we're really trying to balance price with performance. 
and giving you the best price performance ratio with all the reliability of the server class parts. Yeah, that redundancy is always really important. You cannot have downtime with the server, no. I mean, especially if your entire business is relying on it. Right. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about options here. So building your own system versus buying a system uh, integration option. So what would you, what would you consider kind of the uh, comparative points here? So, um, you, most people buy their own servers, you know, and Newegg sells HP and Lenovo servers that you can buy ready to go. Um, you can get them with an OS even. And um, that's, that's the way a lot of people like to go because you get the support and warranty from the server manufacturer. And, and actually it's a much easier solution if you just don't have the time to build your own system. Exactly. And then uh, if we buy our, our system builds, then I guess the biggest advantage might be that you get to choose the hardware selection on your own. Exactly. When you build your own, you get to build it the way you want, baby. <laughs> that's right. You that's don't right. need to pay for stuff you don't want. You can focus the dollars on what you really want. Absolutely. And, yeah. and actually, you guys, if, if you had uh, maybe some concerns, you weren't sure which, which uh, hardware to choose, uh, Eric has actually gone through some, some hardware along with another Eric from our office, right, to right. kind of give you guys, give you all some options here. So thank you so much for doing that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. It's hard to start from the very beginning when you're trying to build your own server. So we, we just went through and, and made some recommendations like these, this would be a good fit for price, performance, and all server class components. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so just to do a, a direct comparison now between our, our entry level or, or good server build versus the better version we're talking about in this build and restricting it to the workload, what would you say this server could do that perhaps the other builds wouldn't be able to do or maybe it could do better? Sure. So with the good system, you're really looking at you know file sharing, remote access, user management, backup, um, that kind of stuff. Okay. With the better system, you're stepping up to a real server. So you can you can do an email server. You can do a database server. You can do a virtualization server. Nice. You can rise. You can run enterprise applications on it. So CRM, ERP, accounting, and HR software. This is a server that's going to be up all the time. It's going to give you a great bang for the buck, and you can really do just about anything you want on it. That's that's. An awesome it's a awesome. great server. Yeah, exactly. You're saying it to me, and I just want to buy one right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I did actually want to give you guys an option if you did want to purchase this particular one. We do have uh, a nice link that's either going to show up here in the video or it will be in the description below. But it's a, a list of all of our different super combos that we have listed. We have multiple options for the good or entry level, as well as the better version and the best version. Uh, Eric, we're not actually doing a video on the better version, but I'm, or, or the best version. Could you kind of describe to me what are some of the benefits of going with the best? Sure. So the best solution uh, includes Windows Server Data Center Edition. Uh, we're assuming you really want to max out virtualization on this piece of hardware. So you want to put as many virtual machines on there as the hardware can handle, and that's going to give you a ton of benefits for an enterprise class virtualization solution. Okay. Uh, then Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard Edition is the software we're talking about in this video. What are some of the features that, that users can look forward to using? So Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard Edition has all the features of the, the Windows Server operating system. Okay. Right? It allows you to do, you know, run all the workloads that I mentioned before, but it also gives you the opportunity to do clustering. Right. Oh, yeah, I actually need to know more about that. I've heard of clustering before, but maybe you can give me a, a better explanation than what I've heard. Sure, so specifically the technology I'm talking about is Windows Server failover clustering. That allows you to have redundancy at the server level. Mm. So you know how RAID is the redundancy at the hard disk level? Mm -hmm. uh, failover clustering is redundancy at the server level. So if the whole server goes down, um, an, a, another server in the cluster can take over. Okay. Are there a limit on the number of servers that uh, in a cluster or anything like that? There, there's a limit of only 64. <laughs> That's, that is massive. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so basically then it's just choosing between which server is, is up and running and, and, and distributing load across maybe 64 servers at a maximum on this. You could do that. Wow. And, and then I'm assuming if you wanted to grow, are there, is there a way to buy extra licensing to grow further than that? or? Um, you mean beyond 64 beyond. servers, Steve. I know, I know, I know, I'm talking <laughs> massive. Probably probably not that important, you're right. Uh, but what about virtual machines? Because I, I, know, I know a little bit about them, but I don't do very much virtualization myself. I'm assuming that uh, Standard Edition also has that functionality. It does. So Standard Edition includes Hyper-V. Okay. Hyper-V is Microsoft's enterprise class hypervisor. And virtualization essentially allows you to run multiple operating systems on one piece of hardware. Okay. And that's got a ton of benefits 
um, for enterprises as well as just small and medium businesses. Because when I can, let's say for example, uh, Windows Server Standard Edition gives you the opportunity to run two virtual machines on one physical piece of hardware. So I could theoretically put my email, uh, my Exchange Server in one virtual machine and run SQL Server, my database server, in another virtual machine. And that's really nice because I can choose how much uh, resources to allocate to each virtual machine. Um, and if I have a failover cluster, I can move those virtual machines between the physical hardware boxes without any downtime, without any loss of data. And that's well, useful you know, in case I want to expand my business right. or even for day-to-day -day things like if I need to reboot a server mm -hmm. uh, to install updates or to add more memory or something like that, Hardware, right. I can do so. If I virtualized, I can move those virtual machines to any physical server um, in the cluster without any downtime or any loss of data. So then that stands to reason that if I have certain server now, right, and I've, I've expanded it to its maximum capabilities uh, in terms of the virtual machines that it can run, then would it be feasible for me to then buy a bigger, better uh, hardware solution in terms of a server and then move that virtual machine over and just expand it to whatever it can? Absolutely. Wow, okay. So, right, when, when one physical server is maxed out, mm -hmm. buy another server, add it to the cluster, and then you can move your virtual machines to the new server and kind of rebalance the load. Is there any downtime there? Is no, it there's no. We, we have a technology called live migration. Wow. Right, and it just moves uh, a, a running virtual machine from one physical server to the next physical server, no downtime. <laughs> live migration, amazing. yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> so let's talk about one other feature of Standard Edition. It, it's pertaining, or it's around storage. So. What, what's new about that? So we, we have several new things. Uh, one of them is storage spaces. So storage okay. spaces is a technology in Windows Server that lets you virtualize your storage. And um, you can, when, you're, when you're choosing what kind of storage system to set up in your server, you can choose either storage spaces or you can choose the tr traditional RAID. Right, so if you have the dollars to allocate to a RAID card, mm -hmm. that's still a great way to go. If you don't, you can use storage spaces and you can get redundancy from your hard disks mm -hmm. using storage spaces built into the operating system. And you can do uh, you know, mirror or parity, very similar to, to the RAID functionality um, without a RAID controller. So it's a great technology built into the operating system if you want to virtualize your storage without having to purchase a RAID card. Fantastic. Yeah. And our, our build suggestions in the, uh, in the better version, we do include a RAID card, or yes. is it built into it, I should say? Uh, uh, th there are either RAID cards or there are RAID cards built into the motherboards. Based on the different options that we give for the super combos. Right. Wow. Yeah. Eric, so informative. Once again, Thanks, thank you friend. so much for coming in. Sure. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys also for watching. Don't forget, if you like the video, click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Newegg. And until the next time, we will see you guys soon.